thank you all for being here. It's a beautiful day for being out here. Some fun and music. And First of all, I'm extremely grateful and just overwhelmed and with uh, the turnout and uh, all my friends coming out and really, really grateful for everybody who suggested and have worked to put this together. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm just going to talk for a few minutes and then we'll get back into the music. But uh, just very briefly, as you know, I was diagnosed four months ago, cancer, surgery, radiation, chemo, the whole shebang. I'm still here. So, uh, and as many of you know, I'm a writer and I've, I've been a researcher ancient Mesoamerican cultures for uh, for many, many years, and uh, I kind of made it work uh, for many years as a writer. Uh, my books in the in the 90s and, and, and thereafter were about the Maya and their traditions and reconstructing their astronomy and so on. And, uh, but I've, I've, I've always had a love of poetry and song and, uh, uh, and, and fiction and storytelling as well. So I've always had these other projects kind of on the back burner. Um, uh, my earliest book, uh, which I self-published in 1989, was a travelogue of my very first journey to Central America that I undertook at age 22 in uh, 1986, 87. And, uh, you know, when I say self-published it, I basically did it at Kinko's, you know, spiral bound, and I had a mail order catalog, and I sold maybe 30 of them or something like that. But I always had this forward trajectory with my research and the next project, so I never really went back and uh, reprinted that or anything, but now it's available, Journey to the Mayan Underworld. I've been, <laughs> I've been busy the last couple of months when energy has permitted to, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've published with a lot of different publishers, Inner Traditions, Baron Company, Penguin Books, and publishing has changed so much over the years that I decided to go rogue. And uh, so I've been uh, preparing a lot of my manuscripts and projects for release on Amazon. So just a few weeks ago, this is released on Amazon now. I do have some copies here. And uh, this is basically the travelogue of my first trip to Central America uh, when I was 22. Another book that I brought here, just to sort of sketch what I brought, the goodies I brought, uh, they're on the table over there. And you can also go to Amazon and find these. Uh, about 12 years ago, I was seized or possessed with a desire to write uh, I had a lot of ideas bouncing around in my head, you know, a lot of themes. And, uh, and I've written some short stories and things like that. And uh, most of my books have been nonfiction sort of research books. And I wanted to try my hand at a full scale uh, fiction novel. So a friend of mine in Southern California, she had a cabin and she lent it to me for two weeks. And, I, I had an event going on out there too, so I drove out there, did my event, and then I holed up in the in the cabin with my laptop for two weeks. And I had some ideas and I, I just cranked it out. And two weeks later, um, 65,000 words emerged. And that was the, the skeleton, the framework for the novel. And uh, it's a pretty crazy weird novel. I don't know how these things kind of emerge from your subconscious and the creative process. You know, I think that's kind of the fun of it, you know, the creative process. Things can pop out. It's kind of like songwriting. You know, all these talented musicians that we have here today, you know, they're tapping into something, you might say deeper, unconscious or something, but also I think higher, you know. To me that is kind of what creativity is. You're tapping into something beyond yourself and bringing it in. Uh, you might say downloading, you know, you're downloading it. And I've always liked that kind of idea with, with writing, and uh, it's more of a creative process. So, 
this thing got downloaded in about two weeks, but then over the years, I kind of revisited it and fleshed it out, and I wrote another, I added about three chapters to it over the years, and the whole thing sort of took shape in a more defined way. It's called Three Plumes of Judas, and uh, I won't really, I guess I'll just read the back cover sort of blurb. It begins with a bang and ends with a stone. What would you do if you found yourself in a life or death crisis at the crossroads of Maya myth? Marco Ansari hits the road, navigating the unknown while meeting tricksters and shriners, sinners and saints, daykeepers and deities. He's wrestling with healing a betrayal that leads him to the brink of oblivion, oblivion, trying to remember. How do he and his companions find redemption? The answer from the most forbidden core of ancient spiritual teachings is stranger than fiction. So, uh, there's no point in really trying to ex explicate what a fiction book is about, but feel free to thumb through it. There's copies on the table over there. Um, a third book that I did recently, <clears throat> you know, there, <laughs> I'm kind of a maverick independent researcher, and I proposed some really progressive things about ancient Maya astronomy revolving around the 2012 date in their calendar. And it's a controversial thing, and uh, it's been greatly misunderstood over the years. My whole approach was to reconstruct what the ancient Maya actually thought about this 2012 date, and I found that it has nothing to do with doomsday. It involves a really progressive understanding of astronomy, and also what you might say is a, a, a world age doctrine, or, or even you might call it a spiritual teaching about world renewal. So their whole doctrine around 2012 is really about renewal rather than some kind of fated apocalyptic doomsday or something like that. But that's what the media did with it. And the professional Maya scholars responded splenetically in accordance with that kind of media meme that was going out there. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so basically, um, there was a lot of bad behavior and shenanigans among the professional scholars in relation to critiquing my work and the 2012 date. So this is uh, called Ivory Tower House of Cards, How Scholars and Their Publishers Violate Science. And it's a fact-based expose of things that scholars have uh, said about it. Um, now, I've also brought um, an audio program that I did with Sounds True. Uh, they're down in Louisville, Colorado. I uh, did this back in 2008. And uh, it's called Unlocking the Secrets of 2012. And it's about three hours. It's three CDs. And uh, it kind of just lays out what my work has been about. And uh, I brought a whole bunch of these. And they're on the table over there. And please, please feel free to just grab one of these for yourself. They're free. So, so grab one and take it home. Um, finally, before we get into some good music here, one of my uh, passions or obsessions that developed about 10 years ago is uh, uh, letterpress printing, old school, uh, book design and uh, printing and I got really into it I've always liked book design and uh, uh, so I've acquired some presses and for many years I was uh, doing projects as Josh mentioned I did the CD cover for uh, one of the Holler uh, albums and uh, poetry broadsides and uh, things for friends and, and uh, uh, wedding invitations for friends and things like that. And I, I always wanted to like sort of go to the next level with doing books. And I, I finally just, I, did, I just did this about six months ago in my studio. And it was done on an 1892 Schneidewend and Lee printing press, foot treadle. So human powered printing. And everything is hand set. 
metal ornaments, metal type, and uh, so it's basically human powered printing. And I've got a few of these with me here over there. It's called Taylor. And uh, just feel free to check it out. Uh, I brought some of these with me as well. So, uh, oh, well, one final thing. Uh, Um, this, there's, there's another book that I've been working on, um, poetry has always been close to my heart, and uh, for fun I developed a, a six line poetry style that I call triptagonals, and just to have fun with it I've been writing these backstories, and over the years I've written quite a few of these little six line uh, gems. And uh, before time ran out on me, I wanted to collect them all together into one spot. So um, this is called Collected Triptagonal Poetry. I haven't released it yet on Amazon. This is the proof copy, the prototype copy. I've got to do a little editing on it before I officially publish it. But it should be available on Amazon in, in maybe a week or two or something like that. Um, but uh, I'll, I guess I'll set this copy over there too. You can check it out if you want. Um, I think that I think I'll just recite um, I'll just recite one from heart, and then we'll get into the music. And I thank you all for coming out here and uh, being with me here today. It's it's I'm almost I'm so moved. Um, I I. I I'm glad the weather's great, I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, old friends and newer friends, and uh, I'm just really grateful for you all, all being here. So, here's one to take home with you. Inspired by the muse of timing, I bring it into the heart from the hidden star. Effortless rhyming echoes afar for as long as the poets will sing it. Thank you.